the Dhammapada, verses 137 to 140. He who offends the innocent comes to grief. Yo dandena adandesu appa duthesu dusati dasanang anyatarang thanang khippang eva nigachati vedanang parusang janing sarirasa cha bhedanang garukang vapi abadhang chittakhe pangva papune Rajato va upasagang abhakhanang va darunang parikhayang va nyatinang bhoganam va pabhagurang athavas agarani aggi dahati pavako kayas bheda duppanyo nirayang so papajjati he who does harm with weapons to those who are harmless and should not be harmed will soon suffer any of these ten evil consequences. He will be subject to acute pain, disaster, bodily injury, or even grievous sickness or loss of mind, or oppression by the king, or heavy accusation, or loss of relatives or destruction of wealth, or ravaging fire that will burn his house. Upon the dissolution of the body, the fool will be reborn in hell. The untimely death of Venerable Mahamogallana. Once, the Niganta ascetics planned to kill Venerable Mahamogallana because they thought that by doing away with him, the fame of the Buddha would also be diminished. So they hired some assassins to kill Mahamukkalana, who was staying at Kalasila near Rajagha at that time. The assassins surrounded the monastery, but Venerable Mahamukkalana got away by using his supernormal power. Thus, they could not kill him for two whole months. When the assassins again surrounded his dwelling place during the third month, Venerable Mahamogallana, recollecting that he had yet to pay for the evil deeds done by him during one of his past existences, did not exercise his supernormal power this time. So the assassins caught him and beat him up. After that, they left his body in a bush, thinking that he was dead. But through his jhanic power, he revived himself and went to pay his last respects to the Buddha at the Jetavana monastery. But his revival was temporary, because the beating was so severe that he knew he was not going to live much longer. He informed the Buddha that he would soon attain Parinibbana, the final release from earthly existence. However, before his Parinibbana, the Buddha asked him to expound the Dhamma to the congregation of bhikkhus, as that would be the last time they would have the opportunity to listen to his preaching. So, Venerable Mahamogallana expounded the Dhamma and left after paying homage to the Enlightened One. He passed away soon after. The news of the passing away of Venerable Mahamogallana at the hands of assassins spread like wildfire. King Ajatasattu ordered his men to investigate and arrest the culprits. The assassins were caught and sentenced to death. The bhikkhus felt very sorrowful over the death of Venerable Mahamogallana and could not understand why such a personage like him should die at the hands of assassins. The Buddha explained, bhikkhus, considering that Venerable Mahamogallana had lived a noble life in this existence, he should not have met with such a death. 
But, in one of his past existences, he had done a great wrong to his own parents, who were both blind. In the beginning, he was a very dutiful son. But after his marriage, his wife poisoned his mind and suggested that he should get rid of his parents. He took his blind parents in a cart into a forest, and there he killed them by beating them and making them believe that it was some thieves who were beating them. For that evil deed he suffered for a very long time, and in this existence, his last birth, he has died at the hands of assassins. Indeed, by doing wrong to those who should not be wronged, one is sure to suffer from it. A note from the author. Even arahants must pay for whatever serious evil deeds that they have done during their previous births, as long as they're in their physical body. The Buddha's sickness, like the dysentery he suffered from, or his back pain, were also the effects of residual past bad kamma. However, although they suffer from past bad kamma, the arahants cannot create any new kamma after becoming fully awakened.